Uh, the film's called Police State. People can download it now. It's streaming now. Can you talk a bit about what went into the making of this film? Sure. Um, the The film sprang out of a simple uh, realization, and that is that we're no longer the free country that we've always assumed ourselves to be. And, um, and this, for me, came as a kind of a shock. I mean, I'm an immigrant to the United States. I came as a teenager, and I was uh, struck not just by the abundance of America, but also by the fact that there are these, well, the founders call them unalienable rights. And these rights are not supposed to be up to political referendum, or even majority override. Majority shouldn't be able to, to smash your free speech rights or my right to conscience or our rights to assemble or equal justice under the law. Uh, and, and yet here we are in America, 2023, and not a single one of our basic rights is completely secure. Think about it, just go down the list. Free speech, no. Freedom of conscience, no. Freedom of assembly, no. Right to petition the government, no. Second Amendment, no. Uh, right against of privacy, against unreasonable search and seizure, no. Uh, equal rights and equal justice under the law, no. So this is a um, this is a serious situation, and um, and the film uh, is intended to put a spotlight on that. Now, in thinking about this, the film, I thought I need to show the the genealogy, the origin yeah. of this police state. How did it start? How did it mature and develop? Uh, and then I also needed to uh, have two kinds of people in the film. One is um, whistleblowers, informants, people who have some working knowledge of how this kind of evil sausage making machine yep, functions. Yep. And second, I wanted to have ordinary Americans who are just going about their normal life and then bam, they come face to face with the police state. And this is important because I wanted to answer the guy who says in effect, that I'm not Donald Trump, you know, I didn't go in the Capitol in January 6th, I pay my taxes, so I'm safe. I'm invulnerable. I'll never hear the FBI helicopter over my lawn. And I wanted to show, well, don't be so hasty to say that because our police state is metastasizing way beyond Trump and January 6th. It's affecting a lot of ordinary citizens. And so I wanted to have those guys in the movie. So, well, there's one right that we do have that's still inviolate, which is the Third Amendment, which is we're not ever forced to quarter foreign uh, government uh, soldiers in our homes. So the Third Amendment is the one that they haven't touched yet. Um, I, what was interesting to me is uh, a lot of this, uh, there's this line about how a conservative is a liberal who's been mugged, but there's a second part of that line, which is a liberal is a conservative who's been arrested. And in the 70s, especially, this was a cudgel that conservatives used over the left, which is soft on crime. The civil rights are only protecting criminals. And I remember when the Patriot Act was being passed, the argument is this is only going to be used against terrorists. And you have this image of, you know, another 9-11 happening and someone's hostage and they've got this password and you got to get at him at any cost. But very quickly, we live in a time and a place where prominent personalities will say, if you're an NRA member, you're a terrorist. So very quickly, if it's only going to be used against terrorism, well, terrorists can be whoever the government decides is against it. That's very true. And uh, it is true that the expansion of surveillance power and other powers granted to the government in order to thwart foreign terrorists who want to kill us was redeployed. Now, I think the redeployment came initially in the Obama years, but it has escalated dramatically under Biden. I also think that the FBI in the years right after 9-11 perfected a certain type of entrapment yep. strategy. And they did it because they were getting giant shovels of cash uh, after 9-11. And then a year or two later, they looked around and realized in dismay, there just aren't that many terrorist plots for them to foil. So mm -hmm. the money train was going to stop. And so they realized, how do we kind of keep it going bureaucratically? I mean, there's there's an energy in, in bureaucracy to keep growing. Yes. And so they realize, well, we kind of have to manufacture terrorism. Now, we're not going to do that in a sort of completely artificial way. What we have to do is find, you can say, people susceptible to extremist rhetoric. And in this case, it was first these sort of radical Muslim types. But they were, you know, three kids at NYU who are like, you know, anti-American slogans. They thought of themselves as jihadis and so on. 
And so the FBI would plan an informant, typically a Muslim informant. And the guy would say something like, well, you guys are big talkers, but I mean, why don't you join ISIS? And then they'd be like, well, we're not going to join ISIS, man. This is a joke. And they'd be like, no, no, you're, you know, you're, you're saying you're a jihadi. Well, why don't you put your energy behind your convictions and join ISIS? Well, how do I join ISIS? Well, I mean, there's a training camp coming up in Pakistan, you know, next spring. Why don't you go to that? Oh, come on, man. I don't have a passport. I don't want to be money. I live with my mom. Yeah. So then the FBI is like, well, you know, Mohammedia can probably get you a passport. He'll show you how to do that. And, uh, and then you need to do some weapons training. Uh, and, and there's a place that we can show you to do that. So basically, the FBI takes someone who is not a terrorist not in a position to carry out any terrorism, nothing more than a bloviator and a big talker. And they induce this guy step by step to then show up at JFK to go to this ISIS training camp. And then boom, he's busted. Press conference, the media is helpfully present to take photos and, and video. FBI pats itself on the back and we're amazing. We just busted this plot to overthrow. So you see that the stuff that we, we are more familiar with later, not only the Whitmer kidnapping, but January 6th, all of that had its roots in the aftermath of 9-11.